Hi everybody, welcome to day four of the series On My Own. My name is Ida Kavafian and I hold the Nina von Malson Chair in Violin Studies at the Curtis Institute in Philadelphia. The 16 students that I teach at Philadelphia are among the greatest talent um, from all over the world and it's my privilege to work with them. However, uh, when the pandemic hit, it was difficult for all of us, and I can imagine even more so for these young people whose world just came crashing down. We exist for uh, performing, and these, these young students were certainly um, missing the opportunity to share their music with people like you. So this series was designed in order to keep them going and to show them the kind of inspiration they could find just in on their own, in isolation, playing just their instrument without anyone around them. They also learned how to uh, produce themselves and to uh, record and to write and to speak. It was a great lesson uh, in how to, to um, manage a career. Very important these days. I'd like to thank the Violin Channel for their part in um, presenting this and for inspiring my students to reach even higher. Uh, tonight's program begins with Luen Li of China, and he's going to be playing the Four Songs of Solitude by John Harbison, the great American composer. Harbison wrote these works for his wife and they are so evocative and so uh, expressive and so well suited to Luen, who is, um, is a, a really musical and tender player. Um, Luen can pull on your heartstrings as soon as he takes the violin out of the case. Um, the second work on this program is the monumental Chacon by Bach from the second partita. This is, um, this is a mountain we all climb and keep climbing uh, for our entire lives. And it's a privilege for these young people to be able to study this music. It was a great challenge um, for Eugene Lee of Seoul, who will be playing it for you. And she really had to reach down deep to really pull this off and and boy did she. The closing piece on tonight's program is the fourth sonata of Izai played by Cherry Choi Tong Yong of Hong Kong. Cherry really grabbed this piece and really went with it. She is a fearless player and full of passion and full of, of personality as you will hear this evening. The work was written for Fritz Kreisler, so it's particularly, um, it's particularly suited to that style. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you'll come back for tomorrow night's final performance of our series on my own. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Luen, and I am from China. I have just graduated from Curtis this past spring semester and I am currently doing my master's at the Juilliard School. Today I'm here very excited to share with you my part of the Ida Studio project and I will be playing The Four Songs of Solitude by American composer John Harbison. So Ida has compiled this big list of solo violin repertoire from Bach to Izai to some rarely performed contemporary music. Um, so as I was just listening through the list, um, I was instantly drawn by the beauty, the soulfulness, and, uh, and this great intimacy in these four songs. Um, I have to say, especially at the opening tune of the second movement, that folklore-like melody um, somehow just evoked my memories about this beautiful town near where I come from called Phoenix, Fenghuang. 
um, yeah, I guess I just heard similar tunes when I traveled there in my childhood years. Anyways, John Harbison wrote uh, these four songs in the summer of 1985 to, as a present to his wife, Rosemary, who is a fantastic violinist. I want to end uh, this brief introduction with a few words from the composer himself. The solitude is the composers, but even more the performers. The player's world is like that of the long distance runner, especially in challenging pieces like these. And I wanted our conversation and those hours of preparation to contain subjects of equal interest to both. The listeners can, if they wish, add in their own inner distances.
Eugene Lee and I'm in my last year of studying at the Curtis Institute of Music. Before I start to talk about my piece, I want to say thank you to our teacher Ida Kavafin for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Um, the reason why I choose to play Bach Chacon is because first I sincerely love to play Bach's music in general. Second, I personally could hear well balanced between um, various natural human emotions and intellectual mathematical um, composition style in his music. And what I mean by human emotions, I could hear tragic in his music, I could hear sadness, I could hear loneliness, your happiness. Um, there are definitely peaceful moment. There are love. Um, yeah, definitely love. And I think those feelings that we are going through a lot these days, especially, and wish my music could give some comfort and peace um, to the audience. Thank you. Bye.
Hi everyone, this is Cherry Choi Tung Young from Hong Kong. This is my second year studying at the Curtis Institute of Music as an artist diploma student. Today I'm very happy to be playing Isaiu's fourth sonata for all of you. So let me tell you a little bit about this piece. So Isaiu actually composed a set of six sonatas. Each sonata was dedicated to a specific person. For example, number four, the one I'm playing today was dedicated to Chrysler, who was a famous violinist and composer in around the 19th to 20th century. All six sonatas were written in around 1923 to 24, and they are all musically and technically difficult, which was one of the reasons why I really want to learn it during this pandemic, because I want to challenge myself and one of my life goals was to actually learn all six Isai sonatas. And I thought during this pandemic, I wouldn't have any distraction and this is the best time for me to learn it, which was the reason why I chose this piece. The other reason was because um, I was so attracted by the piece, especially the beautiful melodies. And there's one part where the pizzicato starts in the second movement it was it's just so soulful and has something very special about it that makes me really want to learn this piece. Even though I can't really put it into words, but hopefully you will all know what I'm saying when you hear my playing. And yeah, hopefully you will all enjoy it. Thank you! <laughs>
How's everybody doing? Pretty good. How are you? Good, thanks. So we're all in different time zones, right? Well, Luen and I are in the same time zone. You're in New York and I'm in, in Connecticut. And Cherry, you are? In Hong Kong. And how many hours? 12, so it's 8 a.m. right now. <laughs> it's always funny because when I end a, a, a lesson, with you or with anybody else um, who's that far away, I, you know, I say, well, have a good, good sleep or have a good day. And the, yeah. uh, you say the opposite. It's such crazy, crazy times we're living in. And Eugene, you are in? Korea and it's 9 a.m. in the morning. I see. Good. So you are 13 hours ahead and you yeah. and Cherry is 12 hours ahead. And of course, Luen and I are in the same time zone. So congratulations on the performance this evening. Everybody did a wonderful job. Uh, it was, it's a, it's an interesting challenge, isn't it? To, to do all this. Um, let's talk about, well, let's see what was first on the program. I'm trying to remember now. Um, Yes, day four. Oh, yes, it's Luen. It's your piece. So first, let's talk about how you came to cho choose that piece and how um, how it inspired you to help you to get through the pandemic. And don't worry if you're repeating yourself what you said in the intro. I think people really like to hear a uh, personal take on your on your um, on your piece. Yeah. Um... 
I explained it a little bit in my in the intro video that I reported. Um, so, so you have compiled this huge list of uh, solo violin repertoire from like Bach to like classical to some like really performed uh, the contemporary gems. And so I was just going through the list uh, and listening to everything that I didn't know about. And uh, when I got to this piece, I was like, whoa, like it's, I've never heard of this composer, but it's so beautiful. And that like first bar already just got me interested. And, um, and then I went online and listened uh, through the entire thing and did a little research on this composer on John mm -hmm. Harbison um, and uh, yeah and I have to say that I felt especially personally connected to the opening of the second movement that folklore like melody um, that just triggered my memory from uh, when I traveled to this town near where I come from in China called Phoenix um, and uh, I'm pretty sure I've heard like similar tune played from an ancient Chinese instrument um, that can only play like you know like five notes in pentatonic scale uh -huh. so I was like wow this is I love this piece yeah yeah oh that's interesting I wonder if um, I wonder if that's on purpose from John Harbison or somewhere in his memory or somewhere in his um, experiences traveling um he is a great great composer i play a trio of his uh, often with my horn trio it's really a great work um twilight music it's just incredible um how he can be so fresh and yet so beautiful you know so and i don't remember who it was that when you played it in studio class i don't remember who it was that said it but they said um, that the piece suited you so well that it really went with your with your temperament and your approach so I'm glad that this now is in your repertoire and you can pull it out and play it you know for programs or I think uh, the great advantage of having all this solo music is you don't you can just get up there and play you know no rehearsal no um, you don't have to rent a piano you don't have to to find a collaborator. I think we have such great music for solo violin that I was really glad that you guys, um, that you guys learned these various pieces. Cherry, did you, uh, what did you feel when you were listening to Luen play the Harbison? Um, it was really impressive. And I also thought the piece really suited him really well. Maybe it's it kind of like, that said it, I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, it's it kind of like, Tai Chi? I don't know why. Whenever you play, it just reminds me of Tai Chi <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, and I also played Twilight music That's before. That's a compliment, right? Okay. Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I also played the Twilight music before, so it also reminded me of that piece. Yeah, yeah. it's such heartfelt music, and it's so uh, wonderful that people still write that way, you know? True, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Eugen, what did you think when you were listening to Luen play the Harbison? I also thought it, the um, piece really suited him very yeah. well. And very specifically, like, I loved how you, oh, oh. sorry, That's how, okay. how you used your bow. It felt like um, you're drawing a line, like you're drawing, like, words from your bone so i really loved that's a nice compliment that's very nice good so then now we get to the chacon the that monumental work that is so so famous and so so um challenging um and eugen this was a new piece for you right you had not everybody had to learn a new piece so you had not played the Chacon, so it was a good experience for you to to work on it. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, you tend to think a lot about what you're playing, so I'm sure that you did a lot of research on um, styles and, and the form and all of that. 
um, what are your impressions? What are your feelings about having learned such a monumental work? Um, yeah, it is very, it was very challenging and it is very monumental. <laughs> it's really, and I, I had to learn the first part Tira at the same time. And it's very different. It feels like very different. I mean, of course it's a different piece, but, um, it's a two different dance kind of music and to make a different between first and second that was the most hardest part for yes. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I agree with what you're saying. I think the first and the third partita are more alike than the first and the second yeah. or the mm -hmm. second and the third. Um, once you get to, to that um, the D minor partita and the Chacon, that's a whole other world of, mm -hmm. of challenges and, and musical depth. It's really quite something. Um, of course, the first night uh, of this series, we heard the first partita played mm -hmm. by Hannah Tam. So we get to hear both of those if, if people tuned in to both concerts. Mm -hmm. um, what did you, do you guys have any comments for Eugen for, for, having learned and performed this piece. Luan? Yeah, I just want to say great job. Um, you sounded really, really awesome. And uh, I was uh, watching your intro video and uh, you were saying that you felt like so many different kind of emotions in the piece. And I clearly felt that in your playing, you were ex expressing all of uh, the happiness, the sadness, the darkness, and the love, uh, yeah, I definitely heard all of those. I do have a question for you, a uh, very violinistic question. At the beginning of the Chacon, um, I'm curious why you played the bowing you played. Like um, so in Chacon, the second bit is the most important. I mean, it gives emphasis in the second bit in Chacon. But then the original bowing was written in music, like, down, up, down. The down bit comes in the first bit if I play as it's written in the music. But then if I play, actually Ida suggested me with this new awesome boy that I really love, which is down, up, up. Then it gives more lighter gesture and it's more like a dance kind of feeling. So yeah. and. Chacon, I felt like there are so many different interpretations and maybe like later I might play differently and like, yeah, it's just many, many possibility in this music, I felt like. Good, good, very good points. And yes, we were trying, it, we talked about a couple of possibilities to try to make the downbeat a little lighter and the second beat more important since that was the that was the important part of, of bringing that dance form across. Uh, Cherry, how about you? Do you have anything for Eugene or any questions or comments? Oh, I just thought it was really, really great. And also I, I can really feel the dance feeling with that new bowing. Yeah, I was also curious about it, but Lynn already asked it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah. um um yeah. Okay. I think it was just really good. Good. Well, the other option of the Boeing is um, that that I thought about was down, down, up, down, down, up. So what Eugene is uh, does is down, up, up, down, up, up. So the difference um, there is a difference in the Boeing, but the hopefully the result is the same, which is to make the second beat more important and the downbeat less um less uh bumpy i find because that there's that open e with the with the downbeat and of course that comes screaming out sometimes so we have to be careful because it is a light beat to find a bowing that that um that fits the music and that's of course my constant i'm constantly thinking about fingerings and bowings to to make the music um, more effective and more uh, close to what the composer hopefully 
hopefully what the composer wrote. So that's the so now you have to try those two bowings. Did we ever I don't think we ever worked on a chaconne, did we? Luen? Oh us? No, I don't I don't think so. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm definitely going to try those bowings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think you'll like them. They'll make the music come out. Um, yeah, but good that you brought that up because I think it's important to 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 hear about how the pro the process of how people get to the to the final um, decision of how they're going to do something. I think it's also a good point to to um, to see in your future that you may do it completely differently when you come back to it. And I think that's what music is about, you know, it, it's, it's alive. It's always going to be there for you to, to dig in and, and bring something else out completely. I mean, after all these years, I still find things in the music that I never found before. So you have a long future in front of you to, to discover various things in music so I wish I I wish I was as young as you but knew as much as I did or had as much experience as I did right, awesome. <laughs> but anyway um, bravo for a great concert and thank you for participating in the in this project um, I I guess it'd be nice to tell people a little bit about the background of where I met all of you um, Luen was my student at uh, Bard uh, College Conservatory uh, for a year before he transferred to Curtis. And so I've been working with you for quite a few years. And now you're at Juilliard. And, and how is that going? Uh, it's going great. I mean, um, Juilliard is doing this um, hybrid thing. Uh, we don't have that much stuff in person yet. Most of the stuff or online, so I'm just pretty much just staying at home. Mm hmm Good. Good. And Cherry, I've known for many, many years, ever since she was a very young girl at Hotchkiss at the Chamber Music <laughs> Camp, that I think I think you couldn't be over fifteen or sixteen to go to that camp, right? Yeah. 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 So that's where I first met. But Cherry's teacher, Ivan Chan, is one of my oldest and dearest friends and colleagues. So um, I was very um, touched that Ivan wanted Cherry to study with me. So that was that was a great thing. So we worked at Juilliard first, and yeah. now at Curtis. And Eugene, you were at Colburn before, and then you transferred to Curtis. And I pretty much met you at that point. I had heard about you and your reputation. But that's when we first started working together. So all of you have done great and have really gotten through this pandemic in a, in a way that I think is, is just great. It's just, um, it shows your resilience and your, and the power of music to help you through. So I hope you have felt that as well. Definitely. So have a good day to the two of you. <laughs> I have one question. Of course. Um, are, are we talking about the Izai? <laughs> oh my god, I just talked about the Izai. Oh, that's awful. That's, oh, how terrible. Of course we're talking about the Izai. It's just that your teacher is being a, completely spaced out. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Now, okay. You start by saying how you chose the Izai. Okay. Um. So I chose this this piece mainly because I thought technique was my weakness. So I wanted to do something challenging, like technically. Yeah. So I chose this piece, and one of my goals was to actually learn all six sonatas. But I mean, it's very difficult. <laughs> so yeah, I'm only doing the second one. I did the number three before. And this is my second Isai Sonata. Um, yeah, and the other reasons was because uh, number four is actually my favorite because there's just something very special about it, especially in the second movement. So yeah, that was one of the reasons why I chose this piece. Well, I think it'd be a great idea for you to learn all Isai and all of the Isai Sonatas. I 
I was saying earlier to another group that I the pieces that I learned when I was your age, those are the pieces I really feel like I know and I remember and I can play. Um, the older you get, the most, more difficult it is. But when you're as young as you are, that's when to try to take it all in as much as possible. And of course, your sonata, Cherry, was dedicated to uh, Fritz Kreisler, one of the great violinists. And of course, the style um, certainly, um, certainly complements his playing in a very, very personal way. So, Luen, what did you, what did you, um, what were you thinking when you heard Cherry play the fourth Isai? Um. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Again, um, you were saying that you think uh, technique is your weakness. Yeah, yeah. I started laughing when she said that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't notice that at all. You were so fearless. You were so into uh, whatever you were doing or you were conveying. And uh, and you were so versatile, too. Like, in the sweet passages, you, I think you really uh, captured that like unique beauty that Isai always puts on the table and uh, yeah, just amazing job. Good. Eugen, how about you? How did you feel when you heard Terry play the fourth Isai? I really liked your way of playing Isai and I agree that I think you shouldn't complain about your technique. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just there and I think you just fine to learn all of them, and I'm cheering you, supporting you. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Good. Well, certainly, that'll that'll be a good project. Maybe we can get that done before you graduate. Let's work on it. You know, my, um, you guys know who Ephraim Zimbalist was, of course, our our leader, our president of the school and also of course the, on the violin faculty. I heard that he had his students learn a new concerto each week memorized. So I think we can definitely get through the Isaiah Sonatas. <laughs> great job, really great job. And I, I agree with, um, with, the, with the comment about your fearlessness. I think that's one of your best qualities. You attack the the music as if it's it, it's it's you're just gonna jump in there and and just take it, and I think that that really um, it's important for a piece with the character of the Isai Fourth Sonata. So good job, and thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well thanks for getting together and and talking about your great concert. And have a good day, you guys. Have a good night, Luen, and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye-bye.